Hi, my name is Andrew Sadovoy. Welcome to Week 7, Systematic Keyboard Handling, Part 1 for the course, An Introduction to Interactive Programming in Python by Joe Warren, John Greiner, Stephen Wong, and Scott Rixner. So, in the Week 7 lectures, it was mentioned that we could use a dictionary to organize our key handlers. In this video, I'll show an implementation of this idea and you can use this structure in any game that requires keyboard key bindings. In part two, we'll see that this implementation can be extended to encapsulate the entire idea in a class. So why would this be useful? First, it would be useful to allow the user to customize the keyboard to their own preferences. Second, and more importantly, there is a central tenet in, in software development, namely separation of concerns. Suffice to say, it is desirable to have code that is responsible for handling key presses, and for that code to be separate from the details of the game itself. So how it works is, the implementation will define some functions to be triggered by the keys, uh, for example, thrust or turn left. Uh, next, we define a global key map dictionary that will store the keys and the actions. And then we define handlers that will use this global dictionary. And finally, we bind the handlers to the frame's key down and key up events. In addition, we will show the current bindings in the UI and allow the user to update the bindings to use different keys. So let's look at some code. OK, so first I'm going to show you how, it's, how it works. Um, so right now we can see that the current key bindings are thrust up, uh, turn left is left, and turn right is right. Okay, and then we have the ability to add new key bindings down here. So first let's see uh, what happens when I use the keys as they are right now. So if I press up, we see that thrusting is turned on. If I release it, it's no longer thrusting. If I press left, we're turning left. If I release, it's no longer turning left. And if I press right, we're turning right. So I can also change the settings. I can uh, set this to W, for example. And we see that it changes up here. And then I can set this to D. And again, we see it changed here. And I can set this to A. And again, we see it changed up here. And I can use these keys to control. If you watch down here, you can see that I'm using the actual new keys and not the uh, not the old arrow keys. So W is thrust, A is turn left, and D is turn right. Okay. So now here's the actual code. So like I said in the uh, first part of the lecture, uh, the first part of the code is all has to do with the details of the game itself. So we have some globals for handling that. Um, here's where the, the, the messages are that we, saw, we saw displayed on the, on the screen uh, in the canvas. And here as well, um, we have a, a turn function um, that's called by turn right and turn left. Okay, And so yeah, so all the details of the game are up here in the, at the beginning of the file. So now we can move on to the details of key handling. And so the first thing I do is I, I create this key map global variable and it contains a dictionary with keys and functions. Okay. So the functions that we defined here all appear here. Okay, with the corresponding keys that we want though. So next, um, I need some way to be able to change a key. So, uh, and that was necessary in order for the uh, user to be able to change the key bindings. Okay, so this function does that. And all it does is create a new key map, an entirely new key map, um, and add the new, the new key as, the, uh, as the, the key bound to the particular action that's, that's specified here. Okay, and then it just updates key map at the end of it. And finally, we update the labels. And then um, 
this function uh, updates uh, a specific label for a specific key and its spe uh, specific action. Okay, so the name of the action is here and the actual action is here. And so what it does is loop through, it looks for a particular key in the key map. Uh, if it matches the action for that key, then we'll set the label. So it's just a, a way to find out which which key is bound to which action. Um, and then the next thing that we do is uh, we have this update labels function which was called up here. Okay, and all it's doing is updating all the labels for all of the different keys. It's just a convenience function for doing that. The next thing that we have is key action. This is the where the actual processing of key presses is done. So we'll get a key press, so we'll get a particular key, and uh, this is going to be coming from the actual handler from uh, the frame. Okay, so it's going to be some simple, simple GUI key, key map value. Okay, and then uh, an indicator, uh, uh, a boolean that indicates whether the key is up or down. Okay, so uh, now we're, we're going to loop through the key action values in the key map. And if we find that the key um, in simple uh, maps to something in the simple GUI key map, and if it matches key pressed, so if it matches this, then we know that we've got the right key, and we run the action, and we we run it by passing in this key down, key is down uh, boolean, okay. And then and then the the. Uh, the action itself is responsible for knowing what to do with this, and we don't really care how what it does. Um, so next, uh, some some functions. These are the handlers for the individual input fields, uh, where the user can specify the new keys. So we we have an action. Uh, we we're, in each case, what we're doing is calling change action key, which we've already looked at. Okay, so we're just specifying which function is going to be um, called and the new key. Okay, and we can see that the other two functions here are, the, are exactly the same. They're just using different functions. Okay. So uh, next we have the usual draw handler, and it's just going to draw the messages. Nothing special there. Then we have the two key down handler, the key key handlers rather. So we have key down and key up. Uh, they each take a key value and they each call key action, specifying the key value and either down or up. So in the key down function, we we the key is down value will be true, and in the key up function, the key is down value will be false. Okay, and then finally, when we create the frame do all the usual stuff. We create the draw handler and, and bind the key handlers. And then I just added some some labels so we can see what what keys are bound to what actions. And then I added the inputs to enter the new key bindings. So very straightforward code. Uh, nothing you haven't seen before and um, you should be able to use this without any problems. So I hope you enjoyed this, and um, in the next video we'll see how to do this in a class. And uh, as clean as this is, it can actually be a lot simpler. So you'll see very soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.